Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today we are going to be kicking off a horror reading vlog. A lot of you guys were excited about this one when I introduced it in my TBR, so I'm excited to start filming it. It is super early in the morning, if you cannot tell by my voice, the state of my hair, you know? I haven't even done my freaking workout yet. So yeah, it is very early, but I wanted to start this vlog so I could take you through my whole day because I have a very busy day and we're starting out doing something weird <laughs> something i will literally never do so we'll get to that in a moment but first let me tell you the tbr that i have for this vlog first of all we have 12 nights at rotter house by jw ochre and this is the one that i've already started i started it last night and i actually got 33 percent into the book i could not believe the way that i was flying through this but I will give you more in-depth thoughts in a moment. I'm also going to be reading The Neighbors by Anya Alborn, which I have on Kindle Unlimited. And they also have the audio on there. And I've never listened to Kindle audio, so that'll be a cool experience. And then I also have Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke on my phone from my library. I have the ebook. So that is what we are going to be reading in today's reading vlog. Let me just go ahead and tell you, since this is the book that I started last night, some thoughts. So 12 Nights at Rotter House follows this guy who is a travel writer. He basically goes to all these spooky destinations around the world and writes books about his experience with them. And it's like, it's kind of giving um, The Dark Tourist, if you've ever watched that show, I think it's on Netflix, like the travel channel or something like that. Uh, but I really like shows like that. So this is reading like something that I would watch. And he calls up the owner of Rotter House and he pitches this idea to her where he's like, I really want to spend 13 nights in your haunted house and write a book about it. And it'll be like mutually beneficial. Okay, dogs in the hallway, literally shut the fuck up. It'll be like mutually beneficial because I can write a book and you can get the publicity from, you know, horror fans wanting to come and see your house, take a tour or whatever. So she agrees and he goes to stay in this house and his best friend is going to come with him, but they have like a weird, strained relationship right now. So we're trying to figure out what's going on with that, what kind of caused this rift. And we're also in the spooky vibes. If you like paranormal stuff that is actually paranormal i'm not talking about riley sager paranormal fake outs which i really like that too but if you just straight up love paranormal shit this will scare you because i feel like i'm i'm like medium i'm mid <laughs> on paranormal things paranormal horror is very mid to me like i've never really read a paranormal horror that's like blown me away until this book i was listening to the audio and working on my painting back there i don't know if you can see it i'll show you in a minute but the audio was literally terrifying i was catching myself like looking behind me like not wanting to turn off the lights like when i was getting everything ready in my house to like shut it down and go to bed like turning off the lights doing my skincare i was like checking around every corner like i don't know how to describe it this is just like it's so scary i, I think maybe because our main character is like a skeptic like he's like yeah i just write these books and like it's a way to make money and i like spooky shit but like i don't really believe in ghosts so when this shit is happening to him it's like but he's a skeptic he wouldn't lie about that and i don't know maybe it's the audio it is just so effective it really captures the feeling of like a haunted house movie and i really really love it it's like kind of like the conjuring meets poltergeist meets ghost hunters i don't know i just really really like it and there is some terrifying imagery in here as well some of the descriptions just like turn my stomach when when you walk into a house and it's described as like this gaping maw i'm sorry no i don't want to picture a door as a gaping maw I can't even say that out loud. It's so gross. But 
I'm really liking this. And I'll show you what I was working on when I was listening to the audio last night. So I get these massive <laughs> paint by numbers on Amazon and they're like for adults, obviously, because look, they're like so tiny and small. Like look at my nail just for reference. Like these spots are so teeny tiny and it takes like forever. It literally takes me like over a week to complete one of these. But like this Parisian scene, are you kidding me? It's so cute. So I was just like painting my life away when I was listening to the audio yesterday and I had such a good little time. I might try to do more of this later and try to finish up the audio, but I do have kind of a busy day. I mentioned that I was going to do something that I would literally never do. And I'm going to a med spa. Ah, so weird. I am not one to like, I don't know, get Botox to get like, even eyelash extensions to me, I, it just like scares me. When I mess with my like natural self, it just like, it scares me, I don't know. Even sometimes using a Bath and Body Works lotion, I'm like, what are the chemicals? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that fear is for me, but I just like have some weird fear about like messing with my natural self but i got gifted this like sponsored thing for instagram for this local med spa that just opened up in austin and they were offering me free treatments originally i was gonna do um what's it called cool sculpting and then i showed up for my first treatment and i tried to do it and i literally didn't fit in the machine like you have to have a certain body fat percentage so the machine can like grab your fat and they were like girl it's not working so you got to choose something else so i panicked and i was like ah! like i mentally prepared myself for cool sculpting and now we're not doing that so they recommended this other thing which is like a heat version of cool sculpting and it basically like just like tones and contours whatever part of your body you want which is just like so terrifying to me like how does it do that um but i have pcos so i'm like super bloated in my like lower stomach area like all the time like my uterus just stays massive <laughs> which obviously i don't want to shrink my uterus or like mess with my pcos or anything like that but if i have like literally any fat on top of my uterus area it looks like I'm pregnant. <laughs> no, no, it's not that bad, but it's just like really hard to tone, really hard to make it look just like not bloated all the time. Like it just doesn't match my upper stomach basically. Um, so I'm gonna see if maybe toning and contouring that area would be helpful. I don't know. This is definitely not something I'm gonna do all the time, but maybe for like the wedding or the honeymoon or something like that, this would be something that I would do. I don't know. It's cool that I get to try it for free though. And they have a bunch of other treatments and things at this med spa. So I don't know, we're gonna see. I'm documenting my process on Instagram going through this. So follow me there if you haven't already. Um, I also have meetings today. <laughs> ah, I don't wanna go to the meetings, but it's fine, it's fine. So yeah, that's kind of what my day looks like right now. I know I'm gonna be busy and running around like a crazy person. So hopefully I remember to vlog. I'm gonna go to the med spa. Hey y'all, I am back from the med spa. My abs literally hurt like a mofo, but I'm still gonna go do my workout, so. I'm about to run. The dogs are upset about it, but I'm leaving again. Then I'm gonna get ready. And I think I have to take some content pictures. So let's go. Hello. <coughs> oh my, what just happened to me? I just choked. Hello vlog. Okay. I'm obviously back from my run. I got all dolled up to take some content for content. Why I say that like that? She has entertaining men for money. I'm all over the place right now. To take some content for a couple brands. Uh, now I have to go into my meetings. And then hopefully I'll get some time to read. Maybe when I'm eating dinner, maybe when I'm cooking, I can listen to the audiobook. I don't know. I just really want to read this dang book. I just want to be scared out of my wits. But unfortunately, I have meetings, so see you later. 
Hello vloggy vlog. I have been painting. Look at her go. That is possibly the weirdest angle ever. Sorry. Um, but I have gotten two thirds into 12 nights at Rotter House and I mean, I really like the horror aspects, but I just don't care about these two men and their relationship. It's like something we're supposed to care about. It's supposed to be mysterious. We're supposed to be wondering like, <gasps> what happened? Why did they ever not become friends? But I just can't bring myself to care about these men. I'm sorry, this always happens to me with books from a perspective of a main character that is a male identifying human being. I, I don't care. <laughs> it is really, really hard to get me to care about them. Like their stupid little straight man drama just seems so petty. I don't care about them. I don't care if they stay friends. I just want to get back to the ghosts. And every time they distract from the ghosts, I get mad. So I don't know. I love the horror elements and I really want to care about the characters, but I just don't at this point. I'm gonna keep doing my painting, listening, and hopefully I'll give you a final update tonight. Good morning vlog. It is the next morning. Obviously I just said good morning. <laughs> I ended up finishing 12 Nights at Rotter House last night, but I needed to sleep on it. I was going to give you my final thoughts last night and then I started talking and I was like, I need to sleep on it. So, <laughs> Honestly, I'm just as torn on my rating this morning, but I already wrote my story graph review and I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. How do I even go about talking about this ending? This ending was so well done. The twist at the end was masterfully executed absolutely perfectly executed it blew me away honestly it did i feel like there were some ambiguous pieces and y'all know that i like that i don't like endings to be completely open but i like you know a little bit of conjecture a little bit of choose your own adventure thrown in there and that's exactly what this was it gave me just enough to understand the sinister twist ending without spelling it out for me and I love that. I also loved the comparison between mental health and trauma and a haunted house. Like almost like a haunted house is a metaphor for being stuck inside your own head when you're working through things that are really difficult for you. The whole like my mind is a haunted house metaphor was very very deeply explored and I feel like you don't really understand the depth of it until the end so I really really enjoyed that however I feel like all of those things would have hit even harder and I might have even cried if I cared about the characters that is honestly the big piece that was missing for me is I just did not care about these men at all I don't know what it was. I just felt like their struggles were dumb. <laughs> like even the trauma of it all that was like the big thing that ended their relationship and now they're trying to repair it. I'm like, it's, that is dumb. Like that is dumb. Like that is some domestic thriller, trashy poolside read shit. And I did not like that that was like the big conflict in this book that was so, so, so beautifully written and so well crafted. I feel like the trauma could have been horrifying, so much more intense, but it just wasn't. And it made me literally not care. I'm like, okay, now I'm seeing these people as like domestic thriller dummies instead of like deep multifaceted people. I don't know if this is making sense, but basically I just did not care enough about the characters for the ending to hit as I wanted it to. It definitely still shocked me, blew my socks off completely. But at the end of the day, it just did not give me that five star feeling. It's definitely not a bad book, but I think it could have been greatly improved. It's a four star book. Next, I think I'm going to start The Neighbors by Anya Allborn. I'm so excited to get to this one. I have clients and meetings until like two o'clock-ish, but I have like 
a break in there. Like right now it's eight o'clock and I have stuff until 10 and then I have a little break and then I have stuff until 12 and then I have another little break and I have stuff until two. So it's like all broken up. So I think like in my little breaks, I don't wanna like start into a book. Then I'm not gonna wanna stop and go to my meeting. Um, but I think I might like walk around the art museum or something and take you guys around since I'm gonna be down in that area. I don't know. I'll just put in some B-roll from my day and let you know when I start the neighbors. <laughs> Lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah. I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, nah, likely. I be taking shots, yeah, cold blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know how to ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running sh right, see. And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane, making pleasure out of pain, uh. Turning losses into gains, I'm the boss, I'm making change, I've been rocking this exchange, uh, popping off and Very eerie <laughs> to listen to horror in an art museum, by the way. And then I came home, I had a couple meetings, I had to do some work, some client notes, da 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 But I finally made it to the halfway point of The Neighbors by Anya Allborn. Basically, what this book is about is this guy does not have a great situation with his mom. She is pretty neglectful. She's an alcoholic and he is a young man. He knows he doesn't have the money to go to college. So he's like, I got to get out of this situation. And he decides to move in with his childhood friend. They were kind of estranged from each other. So he doesn't really know him too well anymore, but he is willing to take anything at this point so he moves in with this guy and he's driving there and he's like oh my god this street is beautiful like complete with the kids playing outside and the dogs and the white picket fences and then he rolls up to the street at the very back of the street there's this dilapidated house and that is where his friend lives and that is where he is about to live so he moves in thinking that that house is going to be the worst thing about his life Little does he know that the seemingly perfect suburban neighbors next door are what he actually has to fear. <laughs> and he starts getting closer with the neighbors and he doesn't know that they are dangerous, but obviously we, the reader, know that they are dangerous. Oh my god, it's just like that feeling of watching a horror movie and screaming, stop, stop, don't go in that door. Like, I... I want to yell at this main character and tell him, like, you can't do that. Right, Bobo? He needs to get out of there. He'd be better off with his alcoholic mother. So that is where I'm at at the halfway point. I'm really, really liking it. It really feels like, uh, not necessarily slow because it's a pretty short book, but it feels like a character-driven psychological horror because that's what it is. And that's what Anya Alborn is really good at. And I saw this book actually featured in a couple TikToks giving recommendations for the most disturbing books. So I'm interested how disturbing it's going to get. Right now, it's like pretty gory-ish. There have been a couple like gory horror scenes, but nothing too, too bad so far. So I'm wondering when that's going to kick in. It's again, a pretty short book. It's about 250 pages. So I'll probably finish the rest while I'm trying to... Um, paint more of my little Paris scene and I will come back to you with an update but honestly before that I might take a nap I'm so tired I don't know we'll see hello vlog I'm coming to you live from me painting I just finished The Neighbors by Anya Alborn. Boba has something to say about it apparently she's jingling um and I'm gonna give this book four stars. I thought it was really, really good. 
it was just a little too short to completely feel like all the characters were 100 percent fleshed out like it kind of still left me wanting more in some instances so there's that but overall the story was really effective and it was really scary it was scary in the sense that like behind every suburban door you never know what lies there which i like that kind of horror uh but i definitely don't think it was ex as extreme or disturbing as some of those tiktokers were out here making it sound like um personally i didn't think it was that bad like sure it has triggers and what have you but like every horror book has that you know definitely don't read this book if you're like super sensitive to like incest rape murder gore etc but like i maybe i'm crazy i don't think that is too graphic for just a run-of-the-mill horror novel like it's horror redemption that you're getting into kind of thing and comparing this to the last book that I read by Anya Alborn, which was Brother, which is a five star and my favorite horror book of all time, this book is not nearly, not nearly as good as that. But again, still a good book. It's like a four star. Like, I don't know what to tell you. It just feels like a four star. And obviously I can't go too much into what I liked about it because it's all spoilers for the plot. I will just say this. I really liked the way the themes of intergenerational trauma and the cycle of trauma and kind of like attachment um were addressed and made it almost seem like it was the like inciting incident for all of the horror was like all of these mental health things going on and you guys know that I like that and I don't think it was done in a distasteful way necessarily I really we just have to spoil everything to discuss this topic. But basically, I don't think this book was trying to be mental health rep. I don't even think this book was really trying to say something. But I did like the discussions that it brought up, if that makes sense. And it was just really well done. The gore was great. I love Anya Alborn's descriptions of, like, gore. She's just so talented. And it was short and sweet. So if you're looking for a short horror book... I think this would be a good one. It could definitely. Oh my God, Bobo, the jingling. It could definitely be a five star for somebody, especially if you haven't read a lot of horror and this is like maybe an introduction to the genre and you like intense graphic stuff. I feel like you would love this book. But for me, I don't know, it just didn't hit like all the TikTokers were hyping it up like it was gonna hit. Uh, but it definitely wasn't a bad book at all. And this has kind of been the theme of my reading month this month is like, everything's a fucking four star. And the thing is like, I shouldn't even be mad about that. You know, I should not be mad about that because a four star is a good book. Like you cannot complain about reading a good book. You know what I mean? But it's like, I want to. <laughs> Because it's like, when will the five-star books like, come? I feel like all month I've just been like, okay, it was good. Yeah, I really liked it. Uh, but it just doesn't give me my, fi my five-star feeling. Uh, but y'all have been saying the last book that I want to read for this vlog, Sour Candy. I'm really going to love it. Like, multiple people have said that in my comments. And I have also gotten DMs asking me specifically to read Sour Candy. So, Sour Candy by Kaylin Patrick Burke is up next on the docket. I am wanting to paint and I have to like read this book physically because I have it from the library. So who knows if I'm gonna quit painting to do that? Who knows when I'll start? I might give you an update in the morning. And yeah. Oh God, I almost fell. And yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave it tonight. Okay, I'm falling. I'm gonna go to bed now. Good night. Hello vlog. I just got out of the med spa. It is the next morning. I have actually done a lot today before 10 a.m. <laughs> I have done some notes for clients, made a treatment plan, um, ran three miles, and I went to the med spa. So we're feeling productive. I did not read though, so unfortunate. I think I'm going to go get a smoothie and I also have to like do some brand stuff, like brand collaboration stuff. So I need to go to this boutique um, and see what the deal with that is. So I'll take you along as I do that. And I think I'm going to go lay by the pool and read this book. I find when I'm laying out 
when I get to the 100 page mark, I start to burn. And Sour Candy is literally 100 pages, so it's the perfect amount of time to lay out. I'm gonna go do that. This day is so fun. Y'all know when I vlog on Fridays, I have such a good day. I love Fridays. I love having Fridays off. I love being my own boss. We're in the fucking Gaslight Girl Keep Gate Boss. <laughs> We're in that era right now. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Hello vlog. I am home from my errands, eating my kava bowl, which is delicious. And then I'm gonna finally get to lay out and read this book and tell you guys what I think. I'm so excited and this food is so delicious. Today has been so wonderful. I feel like this is the most positive I've ever been on camera. Positivity is not like quite a part of my brand, I feel, but today it is, yay. Hey vlog, I just laid out for like an hour and a half. Something happened to me. <laughs> okay, the book talk girlies, the basic book talk girlies. I'm not talking about y'all people, the people on my channel, the people who like elite book reviews of like underground <laughs> books. You know what I mean? Just like not the most basic books on earth. Like I would like to think that I read a good range of books. The people who live in my building, basic book talk girlies all they read is colleen hoover christina lauren and taylor jenkins read that's literally it so i'm sitting there you know reading sour candy just trying to live my life lay out get some sun and i'm out there for like an hour 15 minutes ish a good chunk into the book and these two girls sit down next to me and they're talking about what they're reading and one girl's reading november 9th and the other girl's like, oh my God, have you read It Ends With Us? And the girl was like, no, like, I think that would be too triggering for me. Like, I don't think I can do it. And the other girl's like, oh, well, if you're not gonna read it, do you want me to just like, what the hype's about? Like, you want me to just tell you what happens? And proceed to spoil the entire plot of It Ends With Us. Keep in mind, nobody else out by the pool, and there were like six or seven other people and me, nobody else was talking. And our pool is like inside like the building, so it's like reverberating. Literally everyone laying out there, including myself, got the entire fucking book spoiled for them. So if any of them want to read it, I'm sorry to them. Thank God I already read it. And then after that, they started talking about Evelyn Hugo. Spoiled the whole thing! The whole thing! Oh! So I was getting so mad. I was literally getting so fucking mad. I was sitting there like, how are you just gonna be spoiling books aloud? Like, and my favorite books too. Like I would be pissed if the reveals in both of those books were taken away from me. I would be so mad. Anyway, the girl who spoiled it ends with us, she was reading The Couple Next Door by Sherry Lupina. And I literally, as I got up, cause I was like angrily packing up my shit and leaving. As I got up, I literally almost just turned to her and said, the did it. <laughs> So close to spoiling that book for her. So close. Because that is just such a hoey thing to do. Like, why are you such a hoe? Ugh, that's so embarrassing. Are you not embarrassed? I got on my HRH collection bullshit for one second. Thank you for letting me purge that out of my body. Now, <laughs> I will go ahead and tell you about Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke because I am, in fact, a little bit over halfway done with it and i really like it it is like giving me the like panicked thrilled feeling that i like to feel when i read horror especially a short horror it is pulling up with the impact right away we're basically following this guy who is having this wonderful day he's just having a cute little saturday with his girlfriend and his girlfriend's like Baby, can you get me some chocolate at the store and he's like of course anything for you what a man goes to the store, gets the chocolate, in the aisle, this kid is like screaming like a total fucking banshee. And he's like, yeah, this is exactly why I don't want kids. And I read that and I was like, same bro, I'll stick two chihuahuas for now. So he sees a screaming child and he like tries to like calm him down. And the child has his bag of sour candy that's like spilled all over the aisle. And he offers the dude the candy and he eats it. Little does he know that he is now cursed <laughs> by that one action and things evolve from there, which I obviously don't wanna spoil because spoilers are horrible. So the story goes on and on and we figure out like 
the thing about the thing on the cover, like the horned people, the antler people, like what they are called and what their whole deal is. And it is really scary. It's one of those like books where he is saying, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on to the people around him. And all the people around him are like, yes, you do. What are you saying? It's just like, they're all gaslighting the fuck out of him, but they don't know they're doing it. Oh, it is so just like heart pumping and so good. And all of you guys that told me that I was going to like this book, you were totally right. I cannot wait to see what the ending is. So I'm going to probably shower, get my life together. So I'm not like sweaty from laying out and then I'm going to finish this book and I will come back to you with a final review. Hi, I finished Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. And honestly, I'm a little disappointed. Like this wasn't a bad book at all. It was really, really great until the last chapter. The last chapter just cut off so, so quick. Like the ending was so abrupt. <sighs> I just like, I wanted to give it five stars so bad because the first literally a hundred pages were so good. The majority of the story was so, so good. I felt what the character was feeling, our main character whose life was getting taken over by these weird creatures. I felt his emotions. I was rooting for him, but then the ending happened. And first of all, it was like, like I said, very abrupt, very, very short boom ending, but it didn't leave a big impact. It mostly just left me confused because basically how this curse was transferred into our main character throughout the story, that is how we, the reader, knows how the curse is transferred. And then it gets transferred to someone else at the end of the book, which is supposed to be this big shocking thing. And yes, it was, and it was ironic and it made sense. But at the same time, it was like, but the person that it was transferred to didn't do the thing to initiate the transfer. And I get it like other like mythical creatures can do things in an inconsistent way. And obviously there's no like, you know, criteria for that. I don't know about these creatures, but at the same time, it's like if you set up that mode of transferring the curse, shouldn't that be consistent throughout the novel? I just didn't understand why it was changed. I think it could have been done in a way where it was kept consistent because that was just a little bit confusing to me. And I thought like, maybe I'm stupid. <laughs> like maybe I missed something, I didn't know. So I went and read reviews and there were so many four star reviews that said the same exact thing that I was thinking that they were all in and gonna give it five stars until the very last chapter because it was just confusing and kind of out of left field the way that things happened. Plus it was abrupt. So I feel like I didn't miss anything and it's just, that's the way that that book is. So I'm gonna end up giving Sour Candy, like I said, a four out of five stars. Can you believe <laughs> we had three four star books? Every single one of these books, I gave four stars in this vlog. I don't know what's worse. Like I didn't read any bad books, but also like I didn't have any content to really like rant about. And I also didn't have any five star books to like rave about. So I feel like this was just like a very chill vlog. We got three four star books. These are all such good books. I recommend all three of these horror books to you if you are a horror lover. And that's gonna be it for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. If you did, leave me a spooky emoji in the comments, a spider, a ghost, the little blood syringe, anything horror-ish. <laughs> Just to let me know that you made it this far and don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you in my next video. Bye.